morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the house of the Lord. It's good to have you here that are here physically today, and it's also good to have you who are at home, whether you're watching on your TV or your computer or whatever it may be. Welcome, welcome. It's good to have you, and let me say right up front, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. This is a strange day, and we're in a strange time. I was telling someone earlier today, you know, I think all the days that we have special days normally are going to be very strange how we handle them this year so uh, I think that when we ever get back to some type of normal whatever that normal winds up being it's going to we're going to have a big celebration we're going to celebrate everything all together Father's Day Mother's Day you name it day we're going to celebrate it you know so looking forward to that day you know we must remember that uh, the Lord is our God and he will protect us, and he will bless us. And so we just have to trust him. We just need to put our trust in him and trust him to be our God and to take care of us. Uh, having said that, we also have to use the good wisdom that God gave us. And we need to use that to be safe, not only for our sake, but for the sake of the others, people around us. It's very important. So let us pray, please. Father, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to be here and those that are here today. Would your Holy Spirit be with us all and bless us and protect us, Lord, and even those that are someplace else, Lord, if they're at the hearing of your word, the hearing of this message, we pray for them too. We lift each other up to you. We lift up the service to you. We lift up your church to you. Lord, you are our God. And we know we're sinners. And we know we're not worthy. But Lord, we put our trust in you. We trust you right now, Lord, to be with us, to protect us, and to lead us and guide us in all that we do and say. For it is in your name, Jesus, we do pray. Amen. So the announcements, as I continue with the announcements, is still we're having one service every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We continue to have our service. No fellowship, no afternoon services, no Wednesday night Bible studies. We are having the 5 a.m. prayer service for those of you who'd like to get up and come here. We do have a 5 o'clock prayer service, and we have a Friday night, this past Friday night, we had a prayer meeting at 8 o'clock here at the church. Uh, actually, we had a pretty good show in this past Friday night. It was a blessing. So uh, those of you, if you feel like praying and you want to get out of the house, you can come here on Friday nights at 8 o'clock or early in the morning at 5 a.m. It's a beautiful uh, outside as we watch the sun come up sometimes. And it's just a beautiful time to give God glory and honor. So please pray for each other. Please continue to pray because we... We need God's prayers. As God's children, we should trust God and we should be praying for each other continuously, all the time, praying for protection, praying for God's love and mercy and grace to be with us. Again, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. It's so good to have you here with us. And I'm so glad that you've been able to come. And those of you who cannot come for whatever the reason, our thoughts and our prayers go out to you also. Now let us bow our heads, please, for a word of prayer. As I read from God's Word, I'm going to read Psalm uh, 66, verses 16 through 20. The Word says, Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what He has done for me. I cried out to Him with my mouth. His praises was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened in my heart and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Amen. This morning as we gather here and as we gather at home, let us open our hearts up to God. Let us give him glory and honor, for he is our God. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. 
Would you pray this prayer with me, a prayer of repentance? Would you pray a prayer for each other? Would you pray a prayer for this service? Would you pray for this word? Pray for this message. Pray that God would be pleased with us. Let us lift up our voices now. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Praise His holy name. Mighty God, we humble ourselves before You. You are our God, and there is no other. You are holy and righteous, and we are sinners. Forgive us, Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us. Separate our sin from us, Lord, and let us come into Your presence. Let us worship You. Let us praise You. Let it be sincere. Let it be from our hearts, Lord. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being our Redeemer. Thank you for being the Christ, the Son of God. Holy Spirit, anoint us and use us now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this privilege and this honor to come to you, to call you Abba Father, to call you our God, because, Lord, you have paid our price for us You have redeemed us. You have cleansed us, Lord. You are our God. Please, Lord, help us now. Help us to worship you in spirit. Help us to worship you and give you glory. Help us to please you, Lord, no matter what the world is doing, no matter what's going on around us, Lord. We humble ourselves before you. And I know, Lord, many of us struggle. We struggle because, Lord, there's so much things going on around us and things we're not sure of. Lord, we pray for more faith. More faith, Lord, that we may be closer to you, that you would receive glory in what we do and say, that we would be pleasing to you. I lift all these souls, Lord, the whole church up to you, every family, every soul, helping us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. For it is in your precious name, Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to sing, All Hail the Power of Jesus. Let angels prostrate fall Bring forth the royal diadem And crown him Lord of all Bring forth the royal diadem And crown him Lord of all Sinners whose love can ne'er forget the wormwood and the calm. Come lay your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. Come lay your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all all that with yonder sacred throne we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Amen. And now we're going to sing Arise and Sing, Children of Zion. Arise 
children sing, ye children of Zion, for the Lord hath delivered thee. Arise and sing, ye children of Zion, for the Lord has delivered thee. Open up your hearts and rejoice before him. Open up your hearts and rejoice before him. Open up your hearts and rejoice before him, for the Lord has delivered thee. Once again, please, arise and sing. Ye children of Zion, for the Lord has delivered thee. Arise and sing, ye children of Zion, for the Lord has delivered thee. Open up your hearts and rejoice before him. Open up your hearts and rejoice before him. Open up your hearts and rejoice before him, for the Lord has delivered thee. Stand with me as we go to the Lord. We're going to give him praise and honor. We're going to glorify Jesus. So please repeat after me. Jesus is Lord. The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord. The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Be seated wherever you are. Please be seated and open your Bibles with me to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17. That's verses 17 through 25. Isaiah 65, 17 through 25. Sister Wazel will read for us in the Korean language. Sister Wazel, please. 이사야 65장 17에서 25절입니다. 보라 내가 새 하늘과 새 땅을 창조하나니 이전 것은 기억되거나 마음에 생각나지 아니할 것이라 너희는 내가 창조하는 것으로 말미암아 영원히 기뻐하며 즐거워할지니라 보라 내가 예루살렘을 즐거워할지니라 보라 내가 예루살렘을 즐거운 성으로 창조하며 그 백성을 기쁨으로 삼고 내가 예루살렘을 즐거워하며 나의 백성을 기뻐하리니 우는 소리와 부러지는 소리가 그 가운데에서 다시는 들리지 아니할 것이며 거기는 날 수가 많지 못하여 죽는 어린이와 소환이 차지 못한 노인이 다시는 없을 것이라 고 백세에 죽는 자를 젊은이라 하겠고 백세가 못되어 죽는 자는 저주받은 자이리라 그들이 가옥을 건축하고 그 안에 살겠고 포도나무를 심고 열매를 먹을 것이며 그들이 건축한 데에 타인이 살지 아니할 것이며 그들이 심은 것을 타인이 먹지 아니하리니 이는 내 백성의 수완이 나무의 수완과 같겠고 내가 택한 자가 그 손으로 일한 것을 길이 누릴 것이며 그들의 수고가 헛되지 않겠고 그들이 생산한 것이 재난을 당하지 아니하리니 그들은 여호와의 복된 자의 자손이여 그들의 후손도 그들과 같을 것임이라 그들이 부르기 전에 내가 응답하겠고 그들이 말을 마치기 전에 내가 들을 것이며 이리와 어린 양이 함께 먹을 것이며 사자가 소처럼 짚을 것 먹을 것이며 뱀은 흙의 양식으로 삶을 것이니 나의 성산에서는 해암이 없겠고 상암도 없으리라 여호와께서 말씀하시니라. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 65, 17 through 25. Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not live out his years. He who dies at a hundred will be thought to be a mere youth. He who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat. 
For as the days of a tree, so will the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the works of their hands. They will not toil in vain or bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. But dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Amen. Let's pray, please. Our Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for this word and thank you for this message and Lord, thank you for these people who are here today to receive it and those who receive it wherever they may be. I pray for your blessings upon us all, Lord, to give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you have for us this day. Let us rejoice in it, Lord. Let us take it to heart. May it be pleasing to you. And may, Lord, we carry it with us wherever we go. For it is in your name, Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, before, I, before I start uh, uh, going any farther, I forgot to mention, I'm so pleased with those of you that are here today because you are maintaining your, your uh, social distancing very well. Thank you very much. And, and I know that as many of you appreciate that, and, and it's good that you're doing that, you know, because it shows that you care for other people, and we do care for each other, right? Praise the Lord. So we're going to have a new everything, new everything. That's what this says. The previous age, the old age has passed away, and the glories of the new millennial reign has dawned. It's come. The glories of the renewed age will mean that the past is not only over, but it's forgotten. It's completely forgotten, and not only is it forgotten, but it's actually left behind. It will be a time when God himself will minister through his people. This will be the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. The day of the Lord. And it's coming as sure as you and I are here right now. The day of the Lord is coming. Turn in your Bibles with me for just a couple of minutes. Over to 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3, 10 through 14. That's 2 Peter 3, 10 through 14. Follow along as I read. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. A roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with His promises, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Amen. In our text that we read earlier, we begin the final section, the final section of the book of Isaiah. The previous age is finished. It's over. The promises and the glories of a new millennial has come. In our text, the Lord describes this millennial kingdom and the eternal state after that. New heavens and new earth together. In Revelation, the new heavens and new earth, they follow the millennium. In fact, turn in your Bibles with me. Please, one more place, please. Let's go to uh, Revelation 21. Just two verses, one and two. Revelation 21, verses one and two. Follow along as I read. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Amen. 
most likely Isaiah, back in Isaiah, our scripture, he did not distinguish between these two aspects of God's rule. He saw them together as one. After all, if you think about it, the millennium, the, the thousand years, even though it's a thousand years long, it's nothing. It's only a pinpoint. It's nothing compared to eternity. It's nothing compared to eternity. Most likely, I'm sure that he realized that, and that's the reason Isaiah sort of just put them together. New heaven and a new earth with, I think, what I call a grand prophetic revelation here. Isaiah introduces the reason why the former distress will be forgotten in verse 17. He says, See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind? The word see, see introduces why the people should be listening. He's saying see, to listen to the word of God. Why people should heed the voice of the servant and the Messiah to be enabled to become righteous and to do justice. He says see, the one who created the whole universe and the cosmos, he's going to create a new one. See? That's what he's saying. The Hebrew word translated create here means to create from nothing. Doesn't mean take some clay and make a pot. He creates from nothing. When we read in Genesis 1-1 that God created the heavens and the earth, the word there is the same word here, creating from nothing. In other words, God didn't take the pre-existing materials. He didn't take what was here to create a new earth. He simply spoke the word, and guess what? It happened. It became. The use of this word here in Isaiah means that God is going to create something entirely new, completely, totally new entirely new it won't be a simply a rematter of remolding the earth and the heavens in second peter when we read 310 we read that this earth this heavens that we have today will be done away with entirely gone in a millisecond in a flash of Power, unbelievable power and energy a heat source a favorite heat will just destroy everything completely, totally. As the destructive power of God is evidenced in cleansing the fallen creation, the creative genius of God will be displayed ever the same in a grand, new, wonderful creation. Hallelujah. The new Genesis will fully display the power of the wisdom, and the glory of its creator. The new heavens and the new earth will be eternal in them. And the inside of them is safety and permanence and, and peace and, and plenty. All this will be in the new, the new creation. It's a promise of a fundamental and complete change in the way things are. Something that we're not used to. Something that's hard for us to really understand. You see, the former world will be forgotten. The new heavens and the new earth will be so wonderful that we won't even remember what was before them. We won't remember what happened. All the ways in which sin has affected this world today, all those ways, all that sin will be wiped away and it will even go from our memory. Now, the things of this fallen world 
and the relationships with people that are in hell and lost because of the rejection of Jesus won't even come to our minds. And some people struggle with that. So you're saying people that I know today that won't be in heaven, they're lost, and they go to hell. I won't think about them. I won't know that. I say the answer to that is yes. You know why? Because heaven couldn't be heaven if we're mourning over those that are lost. If you and I are mourning over those who, and we're going to be mourning for eternity because we remember our friends, our families, the people that we tried to get them to come to Jesus, the people that we know that we know they never received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, if we're mourning over them and their lostness forever, then how could it be heaven? It couldn't be. So you see, that's why the Lord creates something totally brand new. Altogether, brand new. Think about this. Think about this for a second. Does that mean that Isaiah 65, 17, does that imply that people in heaven will have no remembrance of earthly events? Will we not remember people at all? i got to be honest with you, I'm not sure. I don't think I know the answer there. But I think this, and I know this based on God's word, that the transformation that will happen in the heaven, new heavens and the new earth and in us will occur so completely that our perspective on things will utterly change. Things that mean something a lot to us today will not mean the same to us then. Things that are important today will be nothing. Things that bother us today, nothing. It's going to be totally different. Our earlier and our falling perspective that we have now will not be remembered and will not come to mind. The dark and the tragic events and aspects of our past lives will be transformed by the, the glorious light, a new reality. And this reality, we will be filled with gratitude and filled with joy. Just think, just think on this, this, this promise from God. This is one of the most important promises that I hold so dear in my heart from God. God's new world. God's new creation. It will be so wonderful that none of the problems of the past will be remembered. Nothing. And none of the problems of the past will be repeated. Hallelujah. We repeat. How many of us repeat our sins and repeat our, our failures and, and repeat and we keep doing the same thing over and over and over? Hallelujah. It's going to come a day when that stops. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? We will not recall or remember the times of pain. We will not remember the years of disappointment, the bad decisions we made, the bad things we did. We won't remember our failures or even the failures of others. We won't remember the partings and the goodbyes and the bereavements. Those of you who are suffering and grieving over the loss of a loved one, you will never feel the, the pain of loneliness ever again. Those of you who are right now crippled with arthritis and osteoporosis and fibromyalgia and all the pain and hurting that you have, you're never going to feel any more pain. You're not going to have any pain. There's not going to be any disease ever again. Those of you who are worried, worried about whether God accepts you, whether God loves you or not, you're never going to be feel insecure ever again. Because you're going to know. You're going to know. Those of you who are unsure of God's love will never feel insignificant again. 
in God's new world, there's not going to be any sleepless nights. There's not going to be any more tired days, no more sickness, no more aches, no more pains. In God's new world, there's not going to be any guilt. We're not going to feel bad. We're not going to feel guilty. No more greed. No more jealousy. No more worries. No more depression. No more sorrow. No more goodbyes. Hallelujah. In God's new world, there will be no more crime. There's going to be no violence. No crime. No more war. There will be no lies and no more liars. Hallelujah. No more injustice. In God's new world, there will be no more headaches. No more heartburn. And no more heart attacks. You see, in God's new world, the wrongs of the past will be fixed, rectified. In God's new world, everything will be set right. And, you know, this is, this is not just the only part of what, this, and this, these kind of things are only part of what we, God's children, have to look forward to. All these things that I just went through, that's only a little piece of the wonderful things that we can look forward to. Verse 18 indicates that the very nature of life and existence also will be changed and become new. In this verse and the following verse, the idea of joy is expressed six times. But be glad... And rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. Did y'all catch that? That's very important. You see, now don't get me wrong. The new creation will share some features with the old. They seem to be both have heavens and earth, right? Their center and capital is the holy city, Jerusalem. Notice that God's creating Jerusalem as rejoicing and her people as gladness or as joy. Joy will not be simply an attitude or a characteristic, but it will be part of the purpose of our new life. Part of the purpose of our new life will be joy. Jerusalem is a place of worship. And it's also a place of rule. Rejoicing will be the new purpose of all that happens in Jerusalem and in life. Verse 19 indicates how different the new creation will be from the old. God's word, uh, new world, brings joy to him. Now get, catch this, his new creation brings joy to him. He says, I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. What a blessed promise I think this is that the Lord himself, God Almighty, he will rejoice over Jerusalem and he will rejoice over his people. He will rejoice in his people. Sin, sorrow, sadness will be gone, will be vanished. How long? How long God has patiently waited for this day when his people will no longer be a source of a disappointment to him, but he, they will be a cause of rejoicing. God, since the very beginning, since the first sin, he has been sorrowful. His people have been hurting his feelings. His people have been rebelling against him. His people have been sinning, and this will stop. Hallelujah. Big difference. Big difference. From Genesis 3 onward, God has been working, and he's still working to bring this day to come to pass. He's still working. Praise his name. Oh, God is waiting for this day, and I got to tell you, 
I am waiting for this day too. Because this will be a day when I will no longer be hurting my Lord. I will no longer be hurting him by my sin. I will no longer be a sinner. I will be made new. And I will live in a world that's new. Where there is no sin. No more inappropriate thoughts. No more sinful thoughts. No more words. No more bad things. Never again will my thoughts or my words or my deeds not be a focus on what they should be. I will be like Jesus. I will be like God. I will live in complete harmony with God and in His Word and in His will. And those is the reason He will be joyful over me and you if you belong to Him. I'm looking forward to the day of the Lord personally. And if you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because we know we fail our Lord, don't we? I wish I could say I don't fail God, but I do. I don't want to, but I do. But on the day of the Lord, I will not do it ever again. Hallelujah. So we have now the millennial kingdom. From here on, a change seems to occur. It's a description of the kingdom age, not eternity. Not eternity when Christ, this is a millennial age here, when Christ will rule and he's going to reign for a thousand years on earth. Though it's preliminary to the creation of the new heavens and the earth, for some reason, Isaiah here, he presents it second behind the new heavens and the new earth. Now, the reason is not thought to refer to the eternal heavens is because in this we have sin and death, and sin and death will not be in the new heavens and the new earth. But we have it here, so obviously this is talking about the millennial. As the prophets did not delineate many times, remember between uh, Jesus' first coming and his second coming, uh, many of the prophets never uh, delineated and said, oh, this is the first coming, this is the second coming, and all their proph uh, prophecies about Jesus. Here Isaiah, he sort of combines the Masonic age with the eternal age. Hallelujah. Verse 20 begins some of the characteristics of the Masonic age. and We know it's not the eternal state again because people still are dying, which will not be possible. In heaven, in the new heavens, in the new earth, nobody's going to die. So we know this is not that time. This is the, the millennial. It's never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. So the protection... And the safety of infants, babies, is, is characterized uh, here uh, as the, in the Masonic age. Today, I think, unfortunately, that's one of the least safe places for a baby to be is in the, the mother's womb, unfortunately. Violence towards babies will end when Jesus comes back hallelujah God's Masonic kingdom also brings long life he will give folk the opportunity people to live out their lives though death will still be present obviously lifespans here will be greatly extended if you think this is strange, remember how long the descendants of the first Adam lived upon the earth. Methuselah lived how many years? <laughs> Those of you who know, you know it was well over 900 years. <laughs> Actually, 969 years. In the kingdom age, 
There will be health and peace and righteousness to such a degree that most people will live all the way through the millennial. Now that's something that's, think about this. In the millennial age, there's a very good chance that you'll live that whole thousand years. Think about that. Psalm 91, 16 says, With long life I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. It also will be a time when people are no longer deprived of the fruit of their labor. And verse 21 states they will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. People will enjoy safety and, and pr the product of the vineyards, what they grow. The labor of their hands will be blessed and made to prosper. They shall achieve what they work for and that they have gained will be secured and safeguarded and they will enjoy everything that they do in comfort. i got a funny feeling there's going to be no taxes during that day. Think about that. You actually get to enjoy everything you work for. Everything you make. It'll be yours. Everything. You see, the injustices of this age will disappear. Verse 22. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will the days be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. Hallelujah. Their labor won't be bitter. It won't be in vain. They will all live to enjoy everything they work so hard for. Strangers won't break in to throw them out and plant themselves in their places. And sometimes it does occur here, right? But it won't then. In the kingdom age, the houses and the vineyards that people build, it will be for their own blessings, not someone else's. You know, I think this also solves the problem of capitalism, or at least corrupt capitalism. Now, don't get me wrong. I know you're thinking, what's wrong with capitalism? Well, I'm grateful for our system and our society and our nation but I'm not so naive to think that our system is the real answer. Because to be honest with you, capitalism is not the answer. The answer lies in doing what? Looking to God and honoring Him. And you can have capitalism without God. And capitalism without God does not work. And capitalism doesn't work because unless people have a heart, like God's heart. Again, like I said, I don't, I, I'm, I'm thankful that we have what we have, but I'm not naive to think that's the answer to our problems. It's not. God will bless those people no matter what the system of government is. God also here promises his people will live as long as trees and they will be productive as trees planted by streams of water. Well, I think that's a great promise. They will have the ability and time to do something right. Then, once they do something right, they'll have the opportunity to actually enjoy what they produced to the full. Hallelujah. The prophet speaks not only of long life, but of a peaceful condition of life. Who wants to have a long life if all you do is suffer and have to fight and scratch tooth and nail for everything, and then when you get it, you can't keep it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 23 sort of recaps the previous thought here and provides a further reason why those, why those blessings will prevail. They will not labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. God's blessings will be on their work, <laughs> Excuse me, and not only on their work, but on their families. It seems very futile to me to lose the hard work of life or not to be able to enjoy life with those that we love. You know the case. You've seen people who work so hard all their lives and they were in, not able to enjoy 
what they work so hard for. That's not going to happen that way anymore. Hallelujah. I also see here the reversal, I think, of the curse of the fall of man. On account of Eve's sin, childbirth became very painful for women. But I think that's going to be reversed during this time period. Another blessing of God's kingdom in verse 24 is the remarkable promise of perfect communion with God. A perfect communion with God. He will speedily answer their prayers. He says, before they call, I will answer. While they're still speaking, I will hear. You know, today, for some reason, in this fallen world, and you know the reason, the reason of fallen world is because we are sinners. Communication with God is hard. It's difficult. Even though you yourself, you know that you're supposed to pray, you know that you're supposed to spend all, as much time as you can in prayer, how many of you spend enough time? How many of us really pray enough? The sad part is some of you think you pray enough. It's hard because of our sinful condition, because of a fallen world. But that's not the way it's going to be during the Masonic age. Yahweh will respond to their very thoughts and needs before they can even finish asking. During their time of prayer, God is right there. He hears you. He will answer you. He will anticipate their requests. He will answer them even before you can say the word. Hallelujah. Perfect communication between us and God. Verse 25 gives the last concrete examples of how the kingdom age will be different. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The effect of the fall made the world a dangerous place to live. Before the fall, Adam and Eve, they didn't have to worry about lions and tigers and bears. Couldn't have been very, even the lambs didn't have to worry about the tigers eating them. Couldn't have been a Garden of Eden if they were scared of the animals, right? Wolves, lions, and snakes symbolize devouring, ravaging, poisonous aspects of our world, both in nature and in humanity. In the kingdom age, wild animals will lose their brutality and, and harmony and safety will prevail. Under God's good hand, on God's holy mountain, there will be perfect peace. Everything will be fully restored, just like the Garden of Eden. When, when Christ reigns, it's going to be the Garden of Eden all over the world. Hallelujah. And in, in here, it appears as if there's an implied comparison, I think, between Adam and Jesus. Don't you think so? I think there's an implied comparison here. We know that all the afflictions of the present life flowed from the sin of the first man. Christ, Jesus, will bring back everything to its intended condition from the very beginning and in order from the very beginning. Hallelujah. That's the reason why God declares that the confusion and the ruin and the chaos that now exist in human affairs will be removed by the coming of the Christ. Hallelujah. At that time, corruption will be taken away and the world will be restored to its first glory, paradise. Paradise lost will be regained. Hallelujah. That's what we got to look forward to, brothers and sisters. So in conclusion... If you ask Jesus to become Lord of your life, 
truly from your heart, God says that you can enjoy a taste of that world even today, right now. We can taste it. We may not have, be able to have the whole thing, the whole enchilada today, but we can taste it. We can have an earnest desire for it. You ever notice you don't desire too much food until you know what it tastes like, right? I never liked nachos until I had my first nacho, Woohoo! right? You have to taste it first to really want it. Some of you may say, well, I'm not so sure I'm looking forward to the day of the Lord. You know what? You haven't tasted it yet. You have to taste it. And you can have that taste today if you'll let Jesus be your Lord and Savior. How do I know that? I'm pretty confident. I hope I sound pretty confident. <laughs> and the reason, let me tell you how I know that. Because 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Hallelujah. So if you've tasted Jesus, if you've tasted it, you know what the, look, the, Lord, the day of the Lord tastes like and you want it. In other words, if you're a Christian, you already are a new creation. Your sins have already been forgiven. Hallelujah. And your sins have been forgotten by God. I know Satan still continues to remind us. We remember, we know. Because of our sinful nature, Satan continues to remind us of how sinful and how bad we are. But we know in our heart of hearts, through Jesus, we are cleansed. You don't have to wait until later to experience the joy of being close to God. You can experience the joy of the Lord every single time you pray and go into His presence. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of righteousness, and peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You can have joy in your life by knowing that God is working in your life. God is working in your life to make you more and more like Jesus. That's my goal. And it should be your goal. The goal of every Christian is to be more and more like Jesus. As the day of the Lord approaches, we want to be as much like Jesus as we possibly can. And you can have joy in your life today just by knowing that you're already a member of God's family and God's society and God's kingdom. You can have that joy today. You don't have to wait. You can have it right now. All you got to do is say yes to Jesus. Let us pray, please. Our Father in heaven, have mercy on us and forgive us. Lord, those of us that know who you are, those of us, Lord, who are members, we know we struggle. Even though we are your children, Lord, we are still weak. We know, Lord, that we hurt you. We disappoint you. But you're still our Father. You're still our God. And we live under the grace of Jesus Christ. We accept that, that grace because we tried to make you Lord of our lives. Please, Lord, forgive us for we have failed you. Please let us be quick to humble ourselves. 
But more than that, Lord, those of us who know you, we pray for those, Lord, who do not. Right now, Lord, we lift them up to you. We lift up those, Lord, who need you, Lord Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. For you are the only way, Lord Jesus. You are the only way to the Father. We need you so badly. And so does the lost. Help them, Lord, convict their hearts so that they can repent and have your joy, Lord, for only you can give us the joy that we need. Only you can give us the joy that the world cannot take away. Only you, Lord Jesus. Only you. Thank you, Lord. If there's a decision that needs to be made, let it be made now. Let it be made now, Lord, for your glory, for your eternal peace to be in our hearts. Let us rejoice in you. Let us draw near to you. For you are our God, and we are your people, and it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let's all stand, please. We're going to sing all to Jesus. I surrender. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender home, I surrender to be my blessed Savior, I surrender home. All to Jesus I surrender, humbly at His feet I bow. A worldly pleasure all forsaken, take me Jesus, take me now. I surrender home, I surrender home, all to be my blessed Savior, I surrender home, all to Jesus I surrender, make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit Truly know that Thou art mine I surrender home I surrender home All to Thee, my blessed Savior I surrender home All Would you bow your heads, please? Allow me to give you benediction. May the love of God not only be in you and on you, but may it overflow from you to those around you. May they see you and know the grace of Jesus Christ because that grace is heavy with you, that that grace can be shared, that the world that's lost, may you commune with the Holy Spirit and anoint you and be under His protection. And may you walk in the light and teachings of our Lord Jesus. For it's in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.